Why do we look the way we look? Most of it's down to dear old planet Earth. It's atmosphere, gravity, that kind of stuff. When you go on a week-long beach getaway, you get a tan. Basic. But what about living on a whole other planet? One astronaut spent a whole year living on the International Space Station. Zero gravity means no healthy pressure on your body, so his bones got weaker. So did his muscles. It also gave him more space between his vertebrae, so he got a bit taller. And that's only a year. The more time you spend at the beach, the darker your tan gets. So, what if we move to Mars? The first major change you might notice after a couple hundred years is your brand new skeleton. Gravity on Mars is much lower than on Earth, so your muscles and bones would probably shrink. Not great for surviving on a new planet. Gravity would make us feel our weight differently. If you weighed 150 pounds on Earth, you'd only feel like you weighed about 50 pounds on Mars. You'd need to eat more to get stronger and bigger to make up for Mars' weak gravity. Sweet! Time to grow some larger and stronger bones, organs, muscles, everything. There'd be one more dramatic change. Your largest organ, your skin. It's the most important barrier that protects you from everything. Germs, wind, UV light, looking totally creepy, you name it, it does it. You might just need a whole new skin. How do you feel about orange? Sorry, people, green skin is totally sci-fi. Here's the deal. Carotenoids offer quite a nice protection against UV light. That's the stuff you find in carrots, sweet potatoes, bell peppers, tomatoes, pumpkins. A Mars farmer's market could make a fortune. The more of these veggies you eat, the more orange your skin's gonna get. If you followed a special diet and wore high-tech gear, chances are, one day, living on Mars might be totally normal. Living on Mercury would be really tough. It's the closest planet to the Sun, and it's definitely hotter than Earth, but weirdly, not hotter than Venus. It's really hot during the day, about 800 degrees, but at night, it drops to negative 290. Days on Mercury are kind of crazy. You know, when you finish the day, but you didn't really get a lot done? Problem solved, move to Mercury. A day on this planet lasts about 58 Earth days. That means you'd have a lot of time to get ready for bed. My guess, though, you'd probably get kind of bored. One excellent solution. Somehow, become made of metal, like titanium, nickel, or platinum. Those guys can handle extreme conditions. Life on Venus would be way worse than Mercury or Mars. Pressure might be a tiny issue. You'd probably have one long, never-ending headache. Standing on Venus is like being 3,000 feet underwater. Oh, and that thing we need every moment of the day? Chocolate. Uh, I mean, air? There's not a lot of that floating around on Venus. There's carbon dioxide everywhere, and the planet's surface is completely dry. That means it's going to be hot. 870 degrees hot. There are a few species on Earth that can survive the boiling point of water. And maybe if they mutated somehow, they'd survive Venus's crazy heat. 266 degrees is the record so far, set by a species of microbes. So get ready for an epic body transformation. Want to live on Venus? You'd probably have to turn into a tiny microbe just to survive. Luckily, Venus's atmosphere has phosphine, which isn't great for humans, but microbes just love it. But since you're not a microbe, not yet anyway, you'd need to wear special gear to control the pressure and feed you air. It's not looking good. Maybe it'd be easier on Jupiter. Yeah! No. It's got no solid land. This planet's made of hydrogen and helium and is known as a gas giant. Unlike Saturn, you'd probably end up just floating around on it. It's like a giant cloud, and if you ever managed to land, it'd be like walking through a super thick fog. Temperatures fluctuate a lot here. It's freezing on the surface, and the atmosphere can be super hot below the surface. We don't really even know. If you lived on Jupiter, 
there'd be no spoken languages. The gas planet absorbs radio waves, so even if you could speak, no one would hear you anyway. And there'd be no music, so no dance parties. What's the point? People would have to communicate in sign language. Great, but it's not. The atmosphere on Jupiter is wild. All kinds of winds and gas clouds. You probably wouldn't even be able to see anything. So that's not gonna happen. Still, Jupiter is awesome to look at. It's so big that it can fit all the other planets in our solar system inside it, with room to spare. A trip to Saturn will set you back about a decade, and it'd be a big old waste of time. Saturn's mostly made up of layers of gas. It has no solid surface, so farming, building, or any other normal Earth activities are out of the question. Before landing on Saturn itself, you'd probably want to explore those iconic rings around it. You'd fail, though, because the rings are made of millions of ice sprinkles floating in space. That's pretty hard to walk on. You might have thought that Saturn was going to be a good fit for you. Some layers of this gas giant sphere actually have quite a nice temperature. If you dive into Saturn, you'll get to a layer with liquid molecules and a cool 32 degrees. That's like northern Canada, Alaska, Sweden, except that you can't walk on it. Anyway, it's only one minor layer, and the rest of the planet is insanely cold. So I guess if you still want to live on Saturn, you've got some work to do. No biggie, you just got to turn into a snowball or something. What about Uranus? Time is kind of weird on Uranus, so if you're out that way looking for a nice vacation spot, definitely choose this planet. A two-week getaway on Earth lasts three years on Uranus. There's even a sea if you're up for a beach vacation. The only problem is that it's made of ammonia, that gross-smelling stuff they use for cleaning. But watch out where you land. If you get it wrong, you might end up spending a whole year without any sun. How would you change if you had to spend a whole year in the freezing dark Uranus winter? We'd need bigger eyes to see in the dark, plus more of that thicker skin to keep the cold out. We might even develop a new hearing system, like dolphins have. Neptune. It's another gas planet, but scientists think there's probably a dense core inside. If you took the plunge to live on Neptune, you'd probably turn into a space reptile or cosmic fish endlessly floating around on the surface. Gravity on Neptune is just a little bit stronger than on Earth. Still, it'd be really hard to stay in one place. The wind there is super strong. You'd have to be much heavier to resist it. Time to eat again. Woohoo! But this planet's really impossible to live on. Scientists don't even want to send another spacecraft there. Welcome to Pluto. Freezing cold, tiny, and super far away. Doesn't sound too exciting. It's even smaller than our moon. It would be so hard to stay on the planet. No more trampoline parks, people. You'd probably have to build yourself a huge machine that would spin you around, sort of a fake gravity machine. Still, you try spinning around all day, you'd need a brand new nervous system to avoid feeling queasy all the time. But Pluto's not all bad. There's a liquid water ocean beneath the surface and ice mountains. If you got yourself a highly trained crew and a bunch of expensive gear and regular supplies from Earth, nah, too much hassle. Spaghettification. Wonder if you can choose your own sauce? It's actually something you might experience if you ever tried to live in a black hole. It's the process of squeezing objects, like you, into long, thin cosmic strips. So, good news, you'll get much taller. Bad news, you'll be thinner than a single human hair. Picture this. You've won a membership to a space gym. You get to travel around the solar system and work out. But gravity changes on different space bodies. So let's find out if you can get stronger elsewhere or if you should keep practicing on Earth. Your spaceship is approaching dwarf planet Pluto. It's getting chillier by the second. No wonder! The Sun is over 3.7 billion miles away. 
You must be glad you brought your thermal spacesuit along, right? To leave the spacecraft, Earthlings would need the help of a gravity machine, since gravity on Pluto is a mere one-fifteenth of that on Earth. Gravity is the force that pulls you toward the ground. The smaller the mass of a space body is, the weaker its gravity. So, on Pluto, you can't do any sports that involve running. If you did, you'd most likely fly away. You can try out elephant lifting, though. After all, you can't do it back on Earth. On Pluto, picking up an elephant weighing 2,000 pounds feels like lifting 120 pounds. The next stop is Neptune. It's over 30 times farther away from the Sun than Earth. The atmosphere there is dark and cold. You might get overwhelmed by the planet's gigantic size. It's called an ice giant for a reason. Maybe today you'll feel like doing some winter sports? To say Neptune exists in perpetual winter is an understatement. The average temperature on this planet is around minus 373 degrees Fahrenheit. But gravity here is only 10% stronger than that on Earth, so you don't feel much difference. This world doesn't have a solid surface, so you won't be able to leave the spacecraft. Is that an ice hockey rink I see? Grab your ice skates and your stick and get ready to outplay your fellow passengers. How about a quick pit stop on Uranus? This is another ice giant, and gravity here is 90% of that on Earth. You can do a few push-ups inside the spacecraft, as you won't be stepping outside. The slushy surface of the planet is made up of water, methane, and ammonia in its liquid form. There's no solid ground to walk on. But if you somehow found a way to go outside, you'd feel lighter than on Earth. If you weighed 100 pounds back home, it would be 90 pounds here. Can we call this a Uranian diet? When approaching Saturn, please mind its rings, which aren't actually rings. They consist of pieces of asteroids and meteors flying around the planet. Saturn's mass is so big that it attracts many other space bodies to its orbit. And right now, you're one of them! Time to get creative with your workout. You've scheduled a skydiving experience here. If you freefall in Saturn's atmosphere, you'll reach the speed of 30 miles per second. Don't forget to open your parachute. Eh, on second thought, though, you won't be able to touch the ground anyway. Saturn's surface is pure gas. Quick fun fact, once Saturn got in the way of the 10th planet forming in the solar system, the planet's debris, which partially makes up Saturn's rings now, could have blended into a planet. But it was pulled into Saturn's orbit instead. You're nearing Europa, one of Jupiter's moons. Gravity here is so weak, you feel weightless. Let's say there's a rock climbing wall there. How about you give it a try? Usually, this sport requires a lot of physical strength. But here, you'll only have to carry 13% of your weight. Your climb to the top will be easy peasy in these conditions. Entering Jupiter's atmosphere will feel like being inside a cloud. See that red spot in the bottom left corner? That's a storm twice the size of Earth that's been raging for hundreds of years. To have some fun here, why don't you do some jumping jacks? I'll count to 100. Ready, set, go! Gravity here is super strong. It's two and a half times as powerful as gravity on Earth. So you'll probably get exhausted at the count of 30. <laughs> Too bad. Uh-oh! Passengers aboard the spacecraft, fasten your seatbelts. You might experience some heavy turbulence. To travel from Jupiter to Mars, you'll have to move through an asteroid belt. Just in case you're worried your ship will bump into something, relax, there's a distance of 300,000 miles between asteroids. Let's stop at Ceres, the only dwarf planet in the asteroid belt. Gravity here will make you feel pretty strong. How about practicing some caber tossing? Cabers are heavy logs that can measure up to 20 feet long. The goal is to throw them as far as possible. Here, a 180-pound pole feels as if it weighs 5 pounds, which is, basically, the weight of a melon. Ready for the series caper competition? Woohoo! Finally, Mars. Remember all those handstands you've always wanted to try? Well, here's the place to do them. Mars's gravity is about 2.5 times weaker than that on Earth, which means you'll probably be able to lift your own body weight without any difficulty. Since people keep trying to terraform Mars, opening a gym here doesn't sound like a bad idea, does it? 
passengers and crew members, we're now beginning our descent to Phobos. It's one of Mars's moons. Gravity here is incredibly weak. If you've always dreamed of having superhuman strength, this is the place for you. You can work out here by, say, doing some artistic gymnastics. Start off with a cartwheel, then move on to tricks performed in the air. On Phobos, you can start doing triple back handsprings in no time. Ah, look! Earth is about to appear on the horizon. It sure looks majestic from here. But we won't stop there now. Instead, let's visit Earth's sister, Venus. It has almost the same mass as Earth, which means these planets have similar gravities. Now, Earthlings can't survive on Venus's surface because of the large amount of ammonia in its atmosphere. But let's imagine you could practice some outdoor sports there. Do you feel like trying bumper bubble soccer? That's when you dress yourself in a giant bubble ball vest and keep bumping into other players. People play this game on Earth. On Venus, with its slightly weaker gravity, it might be a little bit easier. But still, you have to consider you'll be wearing a 25-pound ball as a vest. Kind of like a hamster back on Earth. Not to mention your outfit will restrict your arms and legs. It's a challenge, but it sounds fun to me. Moving on, if you land on the sunny side of Mercury, you'll experience scalding hot temperatures of 800 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're feeling tired after your space workout, a relaxing, steamy sauna will be just the thing. You'll feel like a brand new person by the time you arrive on the next planet. We'll fly as close to the sun as we can so that you can have a taste of its gravity. The sun's mass is huge. It's over 333,000 times the mass of Earth. And gravity here is extremely powerful. You'd have trouble lifting something as light as a bottle of water if you managed to step on the surface of the sun. Too hot, you say? Well, I imagine it's a whole lot cooler if you come back at night. <laughs> Just kidding! On our way back home, we'll stop by the moon. I mean, our Earth's natural satellite. Walking on the surface of the moon will feel like jumping. You'll be able to jump as far as 33 feet. So why not try some parkour? If you play basketball, scoring a point will be very difficult. But then you can jump higher than the hoop and do an epic slam dunk. And how about baseball? If you throw the ball upward, you'll probably never see it again. Finally, we land on Earth. Sorry to disappoint you, but you're not coming back with any superhuman strength. Even when you were lifting an elephant, gravity was helping you out a lot. It was a good trip, though. Don't you think so? I hope you feel well rested, because I've got a tough task for you. Don't worry, it's fun. You're going to visit different planets of our solar system and try to run on each of them. Let's figure out where you can run the fastest and where you can barely walk. The fastest man on Earth, Usain Bolt, can run with an average speed of about 23 miles per hour. But his top speed is higher, up to 27 miles per hour. Sadly, we can't all be Usain Bolts. The average person runs at a speed of 6 to 8 miles per hour. But maybe there's a planet out there where you can beat the famous Jamaican sprinter's records. But first things first, what will affect your speed when you run on other planets? For one thing, gravity. Depending on how strong it is on the planet you visit, it'll influence your weight. And in most cases, the heavier you are, the more slowly you run. Plus, on all other planets in our solar system except Earth, you'll have to wear a bulky spacesuit. Without it, your chances of survival there are non-existent. And don't forget about extreme weather conditions on most planets. It's either freezing cold or boiling hot, or very, and I mean it, windy. Anyway, your amazing journey is about to begin. Buckle your seatbelt. The first planet on your itinerary is Mercury. As you sneak a peek at this world through the window of your spaceship, you notice that the planet looks eerily similar to the good old moon. But just a few moments later, you realize it's just an illusion. All over the surface of Mercury, you see craters left by space rocks. Hmm, this may make your task of running on this planet way harder. This and your bulky spacesuit. Duh. But you wouldn't survive on Mercury without this protection. The temperatures on the planet are extreme. 800 degrees Fahrenheit during the day and negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit at night. Hey. But there's one thing that can work in your favor on this unfriendly planet. Let's say you weigh 155 pounds on Earth. Then on Mercury, 
you'd weigh around 58 pounds, which means that despite your bulky spacesuit, you can move way faster than you do on Earth. And maybe your speed will even reach 13 miles per hour if you try really hard. The next planet on your itinerary is Venus, also called the Morning Star. While coming closer, you see a world very different from the bluish planet you might have seen in books. Before landing, you have to get through a super dense atmosphere made up of carbon dioxide. And while your spacecraft is descending, you're watching thick clouds of sulfuric acid pass by. Venus is often called Earth's twin because these two planets are of similar size and density. No wonder that on Venus, you weigh almost as much as you do on Earth, 140 pounds. So your weight is a bit smaller here, but don't forget about your spacesuit. And still, because of almost the same conditions on the two planets, you'd be able to run a bit faster than on Earth at around 8.5 miles per hour. Your first impression of Mars is that it's freezing cold. The average temperature here is about negative 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Even from afar, the planet looks reddish. Once you make your first step on the Martian surface, you understand why. The ground's covered with rusty colored dust. The same fine dust is floating in the air around you. Wherever you look, you see golden, brown, tan, and even greenish hues. They depend on the minerals that make up the soil. The size of the dust layer varies from area to area, but in most places, it's around seven feet thick. Hmm, that can make running much more difficult. On Mars, your weight would be much smaller than on Earth, a mere 58 pounds. This will help you achieve an impressive speed of 12 miles per hour. <laughs> Aren't you a champ? What's that on the horizon? It looks like a tornado. Is it a dust storm? Then it's time to make a run for it. Dust storms sometimes cover the entire planet, and you can even see the largest ones from Earth. And now you're facing a problem. You see, Jupiter, as well as Saturn, is a gas giant. This means that the largest planet in the solar system, and Jupiter is so large it could swallow 1,300 Earths, doesn't have any solid surface. Well, you'll just have to imagine what your running workout would look like if you could run on Jupiter. This planet has an atmosphere that consists of hydrogen and helium gas. During your descent, you admire thick brown, yellow, red, and white clouds. They make the planet look colorful and beautifully striped. On Jupiter, you'd weigh 390 pounds. You'd have to break a sweat to simply walk there wearing your clumsy spacesuit. If you could step on the planet's surface, that is. If you tried to run there, your best result would probably be a speed of one or two miles per hour. To make matters worse, it's extremely windy on Jupiter, with the wind speeds ranging from 200 to 400 miles per hour. Do you see those rings? That's Saturn, another gas giant with no solid surface. This planet's made up of mostly hydrogen and helium, and its temperature and density change the deeper you go. If you decided to leave your spacecraft and step on Saturn's surface, you'd just fall into the planet. But from above, it looks as if Saturn does have a surface. The seemingly solid yellowish-brown sphere is surrounded by several layers of clouds. The visible outer layer is made up of ammonia clouds. Under them, there are hydrosulfide clouds. And the innermost layer is made up of clouds of water. Even though Saturn is a gas giant, your weight wouldn't be very different here, around 165 pounds. That's because the planet's gravity is similar to that of Earth. But because of the conditions on the planet, and your bulky, bulky spacesuit, you'd run a bit more slowly there, at a speed of about 4 miles per hour. Before leaving, you admire Saturn's most famous feature, awesome gray, beige, and tan rings. These groups of tiny ringlets are made of chunks of rock and ice, you also spot several of the 53 moons of Saturn. Oh, that's Titan, an icy world bigger than our moon and even Mercury. It's the second largest moon in the solar system. The next planet on your way is a blue-green ball of ice and gas. That's ice giant Uranus. It has this beautiful hue because the light from the sun gets reflected off the planet's surface. Uranus isn't solid, hit the brakes! If your spacecraft doesn't manage to stop in time, 
it'll fly through the upper atmosphere and sink into the icy liquid center of the planet. Hmm, I doubt you'll be able to conduct your running experiment here. So, let's just imagine what it looked like. On Uranus, your weight would be around 138 pounds. And, against all odds, you could actually reach a good speed here, at least 8 miles per hour. If you didn't get caught in a hurricane, of course. Extreme storms occur on the planet in the summer, when Uranus is heated the most. Then, hurricanes can spread for more than 6,000 miles. The furthest planet from the Sun, Neptune, is four times the size of Earth, but 17 times as heavy. The blue surface you see when approaching Neptune is actually a layer of swirling gas and permanent clouds. The planet's mantle is made up of water, ammonia, and methane ices. It's the closest thing Neptune has to a surface. And still, there isn't solid ground for you to walk on. So, once again, try to use your imagination. On Neptune, you'd weigh a bit more than you do on Earth, 174 pounds. But your running speed would be just a bit lower than on Earth, around 5 miles per hour. That's the end of your active adventure! Which planet did you like running on the most? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.